I think one of the most important questions we can ask about everything really is where did we come from? Where did the world come from? Where did life come from? Why are we here? This sort of question is as old as time. And in this book, what I try to do is to offer a completely different way of thinking about this problem. To understand life in other planets, we have to understand life here on Earth. How did life appear here? And what we find is that life went through a series of major hurdles to become what it is now. That to be a life of complex organisms, especially thinking complex organisms like ourselves, is extremely difficult, is a major fight. We are extremely rare in the universe. There may be very, very few other alien intelligences out there. And even if they exist, they are so far away from us that we are really here alone. And if we're here alone, and we are alive, and we are thinking about this, and we are the only ones that actually have consciousness that we are thinking about this, we have a very, very special mission, a new directive, which is to preserve life at all costs. So my book ends up as a manifesto for life, for a new way of thinking about our role, not just to save our planet, but to save life in our planet, and to perhaps even spread life across the cosmos. We are it. We are the ones that can think about creation, and we are the ones that really matter. And we should remember that when we start to depredate our planet. You may have heard of the mind of God idea that, for example, Stephen Hawking and other physicists have used, which basically means the following, that nature has a grand plan for creation. It has some sort of hidden theory of everything, what people sometimes call the final theory. This final theory is incredibly powerful. It can explain everything there is to be. It can explain how the world came to be, how you came to be. It has answers for everything. It believes in this final perfection behind everything that is. And what I'm here to say is that this is a dream. There is no such a thing as a final theory. And what we see nowadays, what science is telling us, from theoretical physics to evolutionary biology, it's not that the search for symmetry and perfection that is important, it's the search for asymmetry and imperfection which is important. That everything that exists, every transformation that we see in nature, happens because there is some kind of imbalance, some kind of disequilibrium, some kind of asymmetry. And these asymmetries are really the creative engine behind everything that exists in nature. And perhaps even some string theorists are going to realize that there is no big grand plan of creation, that nature is asymmetric, imperfect, and perhaps more beautiful because of it.